Over the last 25 years, and, and I'm serious, a quarter century, I've been involved in research in microbes. And I've looked at everything, you know, HIV, um, listeria, you've heard about that. Yes. Uh, and, and what I realize is that while we have some pathogens that are out there, they only make up a small amount of the actual amount of germs that we have. And I started focusing more on good germs. Some of you call them probiotics, some of you may call them commensals. Okay, none of you call them commensals, but I call them commensals. <laughs> and what I realized is that if we focus on those 99.99% .99 of germs that are good, then maybe, just maybe, there's a way that we can balance our life and improve that relationship. So the first thing we're going to do, very simple salad, um, and we're going to start off actually with the dressing before I introduce the ingredients. So we're making a, a remoulade. Uh, so remoulade is a, it's a classic French dressing. Uh, it's usually like a, an aioli base, so a little bit creamier. Um, we're going to use a few different ingredients, and we're going to brighten it up a little bit. So I want to add some a little more more acid to it. So we're going to have some lemon juice, some orange juice, and uh, we'll start off. So in a bowl here, let me put this on the table. We'll try to balance it off. For this location. So a little bit of lemon juice. There, about a couple tablespoons, and we'll keep that. We're going to use some orange juice as well, and you can—I mean, you can use the one from the carton if you want, but nothing's going to taste better than the fresh orange juice. So, a couple tablespoons of that. We'll keep that, and you can add a little bit of vinegar if you want. So, it's classically made with red wine vinegar. I didn't put vinegar on your uh, on the recipe sheet. If you want it a little uh, zippier, write that one down. That's uh, it's a culinary that's the word term, of the zippy. day. Yes, yeah, zippy. <laughs> you can add a little bit, a little splash of vinegar as well. Um, the acidity in this will it just help to dress the ingredients, and it'll just help to lift all the flavors. So you can use red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar. This is sherry vinegar. And I'm adding about a teaspoon, just a little bit, of, just a little bit. Now, how many of you actually know how vinegar is made? One, Ferment two. Ferment, yes. Yeah, correct. I heard it from the audience. And uh, what is fermentation? Rotting. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it is purposeful rotting of raw materials to actually allow them to be preserved and then put into lovely dishes. A fabulous example of how something that, you know, germs, rotting that we see as being a negative can actually be a positive when in a controlled environment. Um, purposeful, I like that word. Yes, exactly. So that we're not just doing science experiments, leaving things in our fridge for a few days. True, and you don't need a level four lab to be able to do that. No. You can do it right at home. Yeah. Uh, one such delicious uh, fermented yes. product is miso paste. Um, you don't have to make this, you can, but it's probably easier to buy this one uh, in the stores. Yeah, buy um, it. Super flavorful, um, and we're gonna add about, about half a tablespoon to that. You can find white misos, you can find red misos. We're gonna add some Dijon mustard. This is a classic ingredient in remoulade. And some chopped shallots as well. Mm. Just about one. These are very tasty. Someone likes shallots, I think. All right, and we're gonna mix this up. Uh, zest, we love using zest in the kitchen. So we're gonna add lemon zest and orange zest. You can just pick one. You don't have to do both orange and lemon, but if you do have both on hand. It's a great freebie ingredient yeah, absolutely. that adds lots of flavor. So now we've combined all these ingredients together. You can see it has this lovely beige color. Um, and remember, like, like Christy said, because there is a little more sodium in the miso, probably don't have to add any salt at this point. Taste it at the end. If you feel you really need it, then you can add some more, but you probably don't uh, if you're adding the miso. And so now we're going to add our olive oil. I need Christy to slowly drizzle this in. You can get a friend or helper to do this as well. And just mix uh, as it's slowly, slowly, slowly drizzling in. You can do this in the food processor as well. And so we're going to add about three to four tablespoons in total. You're not eating this entire bowl of salad dressing. So I already know I'm getting stares from. He loves making the dietitian pour in the oil. Yes. <laughs> he knows I'm, I'm watching to see anything. the total quantity. At this point. 
Now, it, we're using olive oil here, so it is a heart healthy oil. And we're making a big batch of dressing, so. That's good. And we're good. You can do this in a food processor as well. Now, if I were to continue adding oil, continue whisking, or if it was in a food processor, which is a lot easier, uh, and you continue to drizzle oil and mix, you'll end up with uh, a mayonnaise or an aioli. So it'll yeah. continue to thicken up. It's a great way if you want your from mayonnaise, uh, scratch from mayonnaise or mayonnaise from scratch. You can do it yourself. Store it in the fridge. It's a lot better than the store bought. Um, for our purposes, this is exactly what I want. So you can see it's really creamy still. I'll get a spoon to show you. So it's still really, really creamy. See how it sticks sticks to the back of the spoon, but it's not thick like a mayonnaise. I don't want it super thick. Just nice and creamy so that it can coat the rest of our ingredients. Um, and at this point, you can season it with some herbs. Um, fresh tarragon is delicious in something like a remoulade. You can add parsley. Fresh thyme would be good. Uh, some sesame seeds too. Not traditional in a, in a French remoulade, but we are, we're never so. traditional. Yeah, <laughs> and we're never traditional here. Mixing it up. So we're going to mix it up. So that's it. That's our dressing. That can be kept in the fridge until you need it. Um, you can use a little bit for the salad, and that'll stay for you know at least a week uh, in the fridge. Um, really, really nice flavors. Really nice and bright. And now we're going to introduce our ingredients. So you can use any salad, but we want to talk about a special ingredient today. And does anybody know? This is not a rock. Don't look it's not at your stone. sheet. Don't look at your sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yikama. I heard about like three different pronunciations, which yikama. is usually what I go through. Uh, yikama, hikama, I think jikama, some people, but <laughs> probably not the right one. Uh, fantastic ingredient. Um, these two will tell you a little bit more about it, about the nutritional benefit. But in terms of the flavor, um, you wouldn't think it has such a refreshing flavor from something that looks like a stone. Um, if you've ever had uh, an Asian pear, if you've ever had an Asian pear, it's got that very watery, very crisp, refreshing flavor. Um, very similar to that in terms of the texture. Not as sweet as an Asian pear, um, but because of that refreshing and that nice crispness, you can eat it raw, which is usually how we do it in salads. Um, so I'm going to peel this, and we're going to cut it into little matchsticks. Uh, and so what I've done is I've just taken a few thin slices, stacked them up, and I'm going to cross those slices. Take your time, just until you get what we call, because it's most of the f mostly French ingredients or French recipes today. This is a julienne uh, or matchsticks, if you don't want to say it in French. OK, so really nice matchsticks here. Um, and we're going to put that into a bowl. And we're going to toss that with our dressing. I have a, a bit more here than ahead of time. Now this recipe um, is traditionally done with celery root. Um, celery root, again, a really nice, delicious ingredient. You can use raw. Uh, also on the prebiotic list, I believe. Celery root? Celery yeah, root. I, it does again. contain some inulin. Mm -hmm. well, so has yeah. anyone heard of chicory? Yeah. Chicory. So there's uh, the chicory root, uh, which probably don't, probably wouldn't commonly eat, but it's, it's used a lot as dried, uh, used as a coffee supplement. Um, really high. Uh, I think it's probably one of the highest chicory. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's the one that's typically used uh, yeah. in other foods. Mm -hmm. So the inulin supplement that you're buying, it's usually chicory based, and you see it in a lot of you know m low fat margarines because inulin fiber is so like almost smooth. You yes, don't really detect exactly. it as much. It doesn't. It's not grimy or thick no, like not. other fibers. And, and so it acts as a fat replacer in things like low fat ice cream. Yeah, and one of the things about you know inulin and other types of these um, fructooligosaccharides is that they have the ability to form a nice mixture within water. And so when you have something like a chicory plant, um, the, the inulin will actually be able to come out into the solution and it's actually going to give a really nice flavor to everything because we will naturally be able to taste the starchiness that comes with the inulin. So, so the chicory itself, the chicory root itself, uh, you can find it in its, its dried uh, form in some, some health food stores, probably some bulk stores as well. But the growth of the chicory uh, root, it's actually the second growth, um, is this guy here, 
which you may recognize in some grocery stores. Everyone know what this is? Endive. Yeah, endive. Uh, some people also call it chicory as well. Uh, so this is actually grown in the dark. That's why it's, it's mostly white, uh, because it does not have uh, the chance to photosynthesize. Um, and this grows from the chicory root. So this is the second growth of the chicory root. Delicious raw um, mm -hmm. and, and really good for you. So we're going to add this to our salad as well. I've tossed our yikama in a couple tablespoons of the, the salad dressing. And now I'm going to use some of this endive here. And we're just going to cut it in half, thinly slice it. The entire thing is pretty much edible. Uh, once you get to the bottom, it's a little tough. Like that little guy there, you'll probably knock that off. You don't need to eat that. Uh, but the rest of it, you can eat. And we're going to put this in here. Um, and you can also find these red ones as well, which are um, a little bit smaller. Really, really tasty. It has a slight bitterness to it, but uh, really delicious. Um, and this is actually a cross between our endive and um, it's called Treviso. Uh, so it's not, not radicchio, but, but kind of similar. So Treviso is, is grown in, in northern Italy, um, and it looks like a much bigger version of this in red. So they've crossed the endive with that, and you have these little, these little guys here. So we're going to use these as well. It's got a really nice color too. From a nutrition point of view, you're going to still get the inulin, you're going to get that prebiotic. And the different color is always a signal that you're getting a different type of antioxidants as well. So the more time you can go for a variety of colors, it's going to benefit your health. The purple. Uh, um, th these ones are pretty seasonal. I mean, you don't always find the red ones. The endive are more common, um, but the price will fluctuate again based on, on seasonality. There's not a lot of people that grow them because uh, you, it's you're grown indoors, right? So you need a, an indoor um, <coughs> facility to be able to, to grow these guys. But there's some uh, great growers in Canada as well as California. California is probably the largest grower of endive. But, um, but uh, you can find, these are more regular. You can find these in most grocery stores. We're gonna add this. So really nice, refreshing, great flavors. That orange that I squeezed, um, you can segment a couple of the, the pieces ahead of time, which I did. And uh, we have a great video on how to do this on our YouTube page as well. And that's it, really simple. I want this nice and refreshing. Um, we'll get a, maybe a little squeeze of lemon juice in there. I know there's tons of olive oil, just a teaspoon of olive oil just to dress <laughs> it up. And most of the vitamin C you're getting in this is not from the orange or the citrus. Most of it is actually coming from the yakima as well as the endive. They're both, you know, per serving, contain about 30% of the vitamin C that most people need in a day, which is a powerful antioxidant. Helps to prevent free radical damage and boost your immune system to fight illness and infection. And is very important as well for collagen, which is a protein that you need for healthy skin and for wound healing. That's it. It's a, you know, really nice salad, a little bit different than your regular salad. And the dressing, again, like I said, it could be done ahead of time. You can chop up all these ingredients ahead of time as well. We'll get some of that. So you have the creaminess with the uh, yikama, and then this nice refreshing piece with the oranges and the endive on top. And that's it. Really nice, simple French Asian take on uh, on a remoulade salad uh, with uh, some nice prebiotics in there. So that's the first recipe.